There is a topic of conversation that seems to keep coming up because it's on the internet, it's out there on TV programs, people talk about it, uh, people talk about it in newsletters and in magazines and newspapers and all kinds of things. It's this idea of currency devaluation. And the idea is this, is the government going to devalue the currency, our currency, the dollar? And what does that mean for the stock market? What does it mean for investment markets? It's really what people are getting at. That's what their currency, that's, the, that's what their worry is about the currency devaluation, really, when it gets down to it. Are they not going to make it when it comes down to their retirement? Now let's talk a little bit about what the currency is. The currency in America is the dollar, right? So we have things that are bought and sold using dollars and $20 bills and $5 bills and all of that. Now, historically, when we look at stocks, we buy stocks based on a price compared to uh, an amount of earnings. Now, if we look at all through history, I've got a great chart in my office and it looks like this, and a lot of you may have seen it before if you've ever been here, but it kind of looks like that. And all the way through history, we see that stocks sell for about $16 for every dollar of earnings. Now, the worry is that the dollar is going to be devalued. So what I want to do is kind of ask this question. If you were a company, if you ran a company and you produced a product, maybe a car or a service maybe that you do or provide for the public, and all of a sudden the dollar wasn't worth anything anymore and it wasn't going to buy what it used to buy, what would you do? you would A, either charge more dollars to make up for the fact that the dollar was worth less. So maybe you would go, I'm not gonna charge $1 for that service anymore. I'm charging $10 for that service. And then what would happen is if you're a company and you sell for a certain price for every dollar of earnings, and let's say those are your earnings right there that you needed for providing the service, what would happen if this ratio still remains 16 to one? Well, this number would go 160. So what happened right here is that your price actually went up significantly to help you offset the fact that the dollar was worth less. Now you may say, well, what if they replaced the dollar altogether? Well, what if they did? What if they decided to go back to um, what the Indians used to use, wampum or something like that? And instead of dollars, now we charge in wampum. Now what would happen is your company would no longer accept dollars. I'm sorry, but your currency is no longer welcome at our organization. And now instead of selling for $16 to $1 of earnings, it would be 16 wampum to one wampum. I mean, it's kind of silly, but that's literally what we're talking about here. Then some people say, well, wait a minute, what about digital currency? Well, the idea behind currency is that it's, most of it's not in physical form anyway, number one. If you look at the United States, it's something like 93% of our money supply is basically ones and zeros. And the reality of it is in other countries, maybe India, uh, you look at it and 93% of their currency is in physical form. And I would argue that the United States economy is a little bit better. I'm not gonna get into why that's the case here. But in reality, a lot of our currency is already digital in a way. Now, what's the idea of going fully digital, well, the idea is the Fed would like to get a little bit of a better control of on interest rates because they have two jobs at the Federal Reserve. One is full employment, and then the other one is to have a stable currency. That's the other mandate of the Federal Reserve. There's those two things right there. I guess I could go and continue that word, sort of messy handwriting. But that's the idea. That's what the Federal Reserve does, is full employment, stable currency. And if they could have direct control over interest rates, that would help. Now, do they really control interest rates, period? That's another debate. Actually, no, because when we've seen that they've been raising the interest rates recently, actually the market raised interest rates way before they did. So it's not really something that they directly control. It's something they indirectly control. They would like to have a little bit more control over it, but it's a great debate as to whether they're actually going to be able to alter the, their ability to do that. And it's something that's being worked on, who knows? 
most other central banks around the world are working on it at the same time. So it's not just the United States by any stretch of the imagination. But let's say that we do go to a digital currency. Again, if you run a company, whatever the currency is, you're going to be selling your product at 16 times that currency's value. Nothing really to worry about right there. But it's something that people see out there and they see being written about. When markets go down, that's when you hear all kinds of scary stuff. That's when the scary stuff comes out is when, oh, I can't even write. That's when, that's when you see scary articles, you see scary conspiracies and all of that. And the reality of it is once you start to understand how this stuff works, it's really not that scary.